Hello friends, and welcome back to another episode of my Pokemon Black 2 Nuzlocke. Let's just take a look at what's going down here. Uh, we'll just keep Zoroark out for now. So, uh, I completely forgot which direction I'm traveling in. I guess that's the way. Did I fight this guy already? Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Alright, so this is, uh, closer to the beginning of the game, I believe. Um, I, I don't know what the fuck this building is, but... I don't think it should be too important. Oh, it's deerlings. Okay, okay, sure. Why would you give that temperature to me in Fahrenheit? Come on, dude. Oh, cool. Surf is cool. Can I use surf already? I don't actually know. Do I need, like, some sort of badge to be able to use surf? Yeah, okay, sure. You guys are... We found a rather rare deerling. He wants to give me a deerling? Uh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to take that deerling because I have one already, but... Oh, okay, this is some, some guy's fighting me here. Alright, sounds good. So, on the last episode, we finally moved on from, um, you know, our our young hell of, um... What the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, I'm Zoroark. That, this makes sense, this makes sense. I got real scared. Like, I always get scared by this, uh, by the Zoroark transformation because I think I sent out the wrong thing. On last episode, we finally moved away from that uh, that sweet hell of the Lipard and um, Lipard and the the pigeon asshole. I don't remember what the pigeon's called. It's not it's not very important. Basically, we're finally progressing through the storyline again. Uh, Downsing machine, bicycle. What's this guy? Huh? What? Something about like Aspersia City and like are they hinting to me that it's gonna be a water type gym? Oh, this is a trainer. Shit. My bad. Okay, no big deal, no big deal. Uncover the mechanism behind Pokemon and trainers. Sounds good, sounds good. Scientist Marissa. Yeah, so, um, things have been finally settling down after after the holiday season, you know. Been, uh, been chilling, having a lot of, uh, a lot of food as usual. It hasn't really been, been helping the whole digestion situation. I wonder if it's, uh, considered BM to, uh, to talk about, talk about your bowels this much. You see what I did there with the BM, you know, bowel movement? <laughs> I'm a funny guy, I know. <clears throat> I'm gonna get some water one moment here. <sighs> Good stuff. Yeah, so these two Pokemon, Carablast and Shelnut, they're uh, very interesting. They are Pokemon that, when you trade them with their respective items, like they each have an item that is uh made for them i'm gonna teach something surf first sorry i'm getting very distracted they both have an item that uh that they they hold when you catch them i believe like shelmet has like this helmet looking thing and then the other thing has a uh, like it has something else but basically if you if you hold this item after you you trade them they evolve into like the the opposing pokemon's evolution that was really badly explained. Basically, like, you see Shelmet is like this little knight, like a bug inside this helmet, right? You would expect that its evolved form is also like, sort of like a knight, or like a jouster sort of thing. But no, that's actually what Carablast evolves into. And then Shelmet evolves into like this, uh, this like ninja bug that, that like Carablast looks like it would evolve into. I don't know why they did it like that, it just seems counterintuitive to me, like I don't, I don't see what the benefit of it is. Wait, I can surf. I just totally realized that I can surf now. Uh, alright, so we're not gonna, like, explore all the secrets or anything like that. I usually am, like, one of those people that try and 100% games, if, if I can. But, uh, this is not the right time for it. Mainly because surfing doesn't really get you much other than just, like, random items anyway. Uh, yeah. Is there any water type that I want? Not really. I have Swan already, so I don't, I don't really need anything else. Alright, well, we'll surf around here just to see if there's anything worthwhile here, though. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. Alright, we're gonna take our bike. So this is... this is what? What what the fuck is going on? Oh, okay, there's an item here. That's right. In that, in that blank space, obviously. Um, I don't know how the game progresses from here. We're, we've hit the halfway point. We're halfway through. We have our whole new team, you know, the B team, as I like to call them. I wonder if that's demeaning. Like, would you be upset if you were caught the B team? Or would you take that as, like, a like a compliment, you know, that you're good enough to, to be able to pay homage to the original A team? Uh, okay, okay. I have bad control over my, uh, my controller. 
I was actually just talking with a friend today about how um, I'm really bad at twin stick shooters. Not because uh, not because they're games I'm not used to playing. Like I, I played a shitload of Binding of Isaac, which is just a, a twin shit twin stick shooter. But um, I, I really have troubles aiming with my right hand. Like my right hand was never meant to. I don't think my right hand was ever meant to um, control a control stick because none of the the game systems I had as a child had a right-handed control stick. I played I played pretty much only uh, GameCube and Wii. And uh, yeah, GameCube, Wii, and I had a PS1, but I only had like one game for it, so I, I didn't really play it a lot. I can't even remember what the controller looks like on that thing. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, and those ones don't use the, the, the right-handed control stick at all. Like, the GameCube controller has that C stick that very few games use, and if you use it, it's to direct a camera. It's never for any, like, real huge gameplay element, you know? Like, basically, I can control it if good enough is all it takes. But if it's sort of like precision movements, like trying to aim a, like aim a gun or aim, like, something that you're throwing, I always miss. Like, 20 out of 20 times I will miss. That's an exaggeration, of course. Like, I do hit occasionally, but... I, I really hate aiming guns with control sticks. I'm just not good at it. I don't know why. It seems, like, really intuitive for other people. But if you watch any of my, uh, my Hyper Light Drifter playthrough, you notice that, like, my gun accuracy is insanely low. I just... I can't do it. It's just... It just escapes me. I just don't understand how people do it. Just... Yes. Good stuff. Uh, we're gonna switch... Whatever. We'll just keep using Zoroark until he runs out of PP. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can steamroll the game from here, like with the, the amount of levels that we have accumulated on all of our Pokemon now. Do I? Oh, I actually realize that this sound might be a little too quiet. I'm gonna just turn this up just a tad. Alright, hopefully that doesn't fuck things up too much, but we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll watch some of the video later on and see if, um, to see if the, the, the sound is too loud, but... I can barely hear it. Like, I turned it down really low so that I can, you know, I can hear myself think that it isn't overwhelmingly loud to me. I'm really scared of, like, feedback noise going through the microphone from the, uh, from the game sounds. Uh, although I think that it's not worth worrying about too much. Like, it isn't a huge deal even if it is there. What the fuck? This thing lived a Night Slash? That's pretty tanky. This is a cool animation. That was a really long animation. Wow, it froze me. Holy shit. Okay, so, Freeze is the most bullshit mechanic that they added. Oh, excuse me, that they added in this game. Basically, what it is, is it's exactly the same as sleep, you're just immobilized completely, but you have no way to not be frozen. Um, sorry. There are no set number of turns that you can be frozen. You can either be frozen for zero turns, like de-thaw de -thaw on the very first turn, or you can be frozen for infinite number of turns. Like, there have been upwards of 10 to 15 turn freezes very, very often. Um... Okay, just give me one second, once again, my professionalism throwing through. And I have returned. Okay, so what I, what was I saying about, um, about Freeze This? Yeah, so basically, they... I like the surf animation a lot. They, um... They immobilize you for as many turns as as the game decides to roll, basically. It's completely dependent on RNG, and there's no way to... Does it persist? It does persist. Holy shit. There's no way to predict how many turns it's going to be. Like, sleep is always two to five turns, so you can... You can at least, like, predict a little bit how long it's going to be. But, um, the, the freeze is, is infinite number of turns. It's completely up to how the game feels. Do I not have, like, a freeze thing? No. Yeah. And, uh, the way that you defrost, there are a few ways. Number one is that if any fire-type move hits you, you immediately thaw on that turn. And also, I, I don't know when they added this, but if you use a fire-type move, you also defaw. And then you, um, in this generation, they added a move called Scald, which is, I think, is one of the, the best designed moves that they have in this game. And what it does is it's a water type move. It's it's fairly powerful. It's a little bit less powerful than surf, but otherwise it's exactly the same as surf. And it has a 30% chance to burn the opponent because it's all right, all right, just give me just give me one second. I'm just gonna close my door here. I can hear some background sounds coming through. I'm just gonna close it quickly. And I'm back. Good stuff. 
so yeah, the Scald has 30% chance to burn you, even though it's a Water-type move. And um, Water-type Pokémon are notorious for being, like, the big tanks in Pokémon, basically. The, there's, there's, this, there's this saying called, like, bulky waters. We're not saying, but, like, it's a very common thing to have bulky waters on your team. And uh, it's, just, it's just very common. I don't know why. A lot of Water-type Pokémon have very good defensive stats. And Water is a good defensive typing because it resists a lot of the good offensive typings, like um, Fire and Ice, mainly. And then its weaknesses are, are really only limited to Electric and, uh, and Grass. And Electric is one of those typings that is, is necessary for the game, but is not necessary on every team unless there's a lot of waters running around. Because, what the fuck? This is the legendary, one of the legendaries of this generation. They say that it's based on the Three Musketeers. I never really saw it. I don't understand why it's based on Three Musketeers. Alright. His name is Rude? Are you serious? Like, is this guy a rude dude? Yeah, 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 okay, okay, three legends, consequences, question mark, but why did it show up in front of people? Uh, two plasma, unforgivable, gets this, uh, Kabbalion accident, unlike Lord Dan, I don't know what they're thinking. Alright, so, um, I, I talked to this guy twice by accident. Uh, I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to be, uh, Catching Cobalion. I'm not gonna catch any of the legendaries. I'm just gonna kill them for experience basically because uh, I just feel like they're not really um, They make the game a little too easy if I just catch the legendaries and use them because they're just so overstated that it's It's like almost impossible t for them to to die unless you really fuck up and then also it's really really easy to um, To just kill everything with them because they have a great move pool and then they're all very strong some of them less than others, of course, but uh, I just feel like generally using legendaries is not necessary. And uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a cool change because I'm always I've always been the one to I've always been someone who catches all the legendaries that that are possible to catch because you know of course it's just cool to to have them in your collection, right? You feel like fucking Pokemon Master or something. I I was talking about something else. Scald. Maybe I'll talk about Scald. Anyway, yeah, Scald is a really cool move. So basically, uh, because there's so many bulky waters in the game, you know, they're they're not really offensively oriented. They're not really made to be able to, like, one shot or two shot things. They're kind of made to be able to whittle down opponents' uh, more offensive threats, but more um, more offensively oriented, but more squishy threats, more less tanky threats. So what you do is, even though you don't invest at all into uh, attack or special attack, you kind of just rely on like, you know, pretty decently high base power moves. And because they have zero defenses, basically, it still does a decent chunk. You know, like you're, you're, you want to basically take 20% from their offensive move and you want to do like 40 to 50% with your like kind of weak move. But because they're really weak defensively, it does a lot. And Scald fits perfectly into this wheelhouse. Oh, Meryl. Oh, this makes me so sad. I love Meryl. Oh well, that's okay. Um, uh, what was I trying to say? Yeah, so... Oh, Fling. Cool move. Um, yeah, so Scald fits perfectly into this. Number one, because Scald has a pretty decent base power. Like, in Gen 7, it's base 80. I don't know if that's the case in Gen, uh, Gen 5 as well, but... Where the fuck? What the fuck? Alright, do I have Flash? I know that uh, Gothita should be able to learn it. Like, it just looks like something that would be able to learn Flash. Yeah, I do have Flash. Perfect. Good stuff. Oh, okay. Lots of things can learn. Alright, I'm going to teach it to a Moomoo Moo then, because I'm probably not going to use a Moomoo. Moo. Oh, a Moomoo Moo has a really nice move pool, actually. Ominous Wind. Alright, cool. Uh, yeah, so Scald is really good for that because it has decent base power, and it, you know, of course, a stab uh, base 80 move is nothing to nothing to sneeze at. You know, it's nothing to be taken lightly. But not only that, but the 30% chance to burn is really high, and burning a physical threat basically just makes it completely useless. Because you know, I, I think I mentioned this before, but when you get burned, your your attack gets cut in half. Oh, this is my counter. Oh shit, oh, I didn't want to catch this thing. Okay, that's okay. I will catch it. I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to be a cocky piece of shit. Will this, will this kill? I don't know. Frank, are you, are you that strong that you will kill with one hit? Alright, uh, I guess we're not catching Wubat. My bad. 
Next time I'll, I'll send out your mask instead. Um, yeah, so... What am I trying to say? Yeah, so so Scald like changed uh, changed the game a lot. It made uh, it made bulky waters a lot better. So some of the examples, for example, are like uh, like Vaporeon or um, uh, Suicune or what else was there? Like Melodic, like a lot of these pure water type Pokemon that are just really tanky, or even just like Swampert and stuff like that. Like before the introduction of Scald, Swampert was always like uh, you always ran him as the tank, but then you also made him physical. Oh, I shouldn't have stayed in against this. My bad. Uh, okay, no big deal. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Swampert uh, used to always be physical because, you know, they, it had access to Earthquake and stuff like that. It was a really powerful move. It's, it's like a high base power move, once again. So even if you're uninvested in offense, you still do a decent chunk. But um, with the introduction of Scald, as a tank, it, it just makes so much more sense to have that utility to try and burn stuff instead of trying to hit like a little bit harder. So Swampert started to be run as a special attacker instead. So it was, it was really interesting, I really like that mechanic. But the main reason why I brought that up, the original reason I remember now, is that when you use the move Scald or are you hit by the move Scald, you also defaw, uh, defrost. I don't know what the, the terminology is. Uh, I'm scared because the other guy was way lower level and he did um, a big chunk to me. I'm gonna send out Cheryl, Cheryl's probably a good matchup here. So yeah, I, I really like that that move. The, another move that they introduced, I don't know if it was in this gen or the next generation, it's called uh, Freeze Dry. And it's an ice type move that's super effective against water. There's no other effect other than the fact that it's super effective against water. And that's a really interesting move, right? You're, you're freezing water and um, you, you shit on it, basically. And it's just a really cool move. It, it, it messes with your idea, like your preconceived notions of what resists what and stuff like that. And, and I like moves like that, like I think that that's really good for the game in general. Um, I, I I felt like this was a like a secondary tangent, but I don't remember. Oh, oh, right, we found TM, uh, the TM for Fling. So Fling is, a, is an interesting move. I don't think it's very good or very practical, but what it does, it's a, it's a dark type physical move, and its base power depends on you on what item you're holding. So, the, you know, as the name suggests, you basically just throw an item at your opponent. And based on whatever item it is, it gives a fling a different base power and also gives fling a different effect. So for example, one of the more common things that they uh, that people like to fling is something called the... Uh, what was it called? Are you just blocking me from, from entering this cave? Alright, I mean that's cool. I'm okay with that. I should uh, use the ice, the, the bike. There's, there's some ball, I forgot, I think it's like the light ball? No, it can't be the light ball, that's like the Pikachu item. There's a ball where when you fling it, it 100% paralyzes the opponent and also makes fling like base 120 power. I think that is the case, I'm not, I'm not 100% on that. I'm pretty sure that that is how that worked, yes. Okay, I'm gonna roost first, let's just see how much this rock type move does when I roost, because then this will take away my flying type. Onyx is not very offensively oriented at all. Wait, I shouldn't have roosted. I, I one-shot this thing 100%. This, does this thing have sturdy? I don't think it has sturdy, right? Does Onyx have sturdy? No, it has rock head. Yeah, it has rock head. Alright, I should have just surfed. That was my mistake. I guess it wasn't really a mistake. I healed up for the next battle. It's not really a big deal. Save myself a super potion. Okay, push that in. Yeah. Give me this Pokeball, Yellow Shard, useless item as usual. Uh, yeah, and then also, uh, you can't use the move unless you have an item to hold. And once you fling it, it's gone forever. Like, you can you can use items uh, in battles, like, against other people, not other NPCs, though. I believe that if you fling an item at an NPC, the item is actually just lost to the ether. It's just gone forever. So it's very, very inefficient. You know, it costs a lot of money to uh, continuously buy these items. And also, uh, a lot of the good moves to use with fling are items that you can only get by uh, fighting in the battle power for like BP, you know, like the the Pokemon World Tournament that we participated in, as well as the uh, the battle subway that we saw in that one town. I don't remember what town it was. So it's not very good, is basically the end verdict of that. I'm glad that I had something that can learn Flash. That makes, that makes things really easy. Uh, a little sad that I squandered my one encounter for this area, but that's okay. I'm actually hoping that I can find a Magneton inside the Charged Stone Cave. 
Or or not even the Magneton. I mean, I'd be even okay with the Eel. Like, I just don't want Pharaoh Seed. Pharaoh Seed would not be good for me right now. Um, yeah, Pharaoh Seed is, uh, I think I mentioned in one of the other episodes, it, it, it was the meta-defining Pokemon of Gen 5. Basically, it, its evolution, Ferrothorn, is a steel grass type Pokemon, and uh, I don't know how familiar everyone is with their typing, but that basically leaves it with only one weakness, which is only two weaknesses, which are fighting and and uh, and fire. And what it is is that it's an insane, insane wall. It has just insane defenses on both sides. You can run it either physically defensive or special defensive. And if you run it special defensive, it's basically unkillable because there are almost no, like, it resists a lot of common special moves like uh, electric, ice. Oh, well, no, it doesn't resist ice. Electric, water, um, that sort of thing. Electric, water, dragon are the main, are the main things. But, um, its move pool is also incredibly suited to be like the sort of tank that its stats lend itself to be. So it um, it has uh, all these hazards. I, I think I mentioned what hazards do before. But it has access to both Stealth Rock and Spikes, and it has access to Leech Seed, which is really nice. And it has decent attack stats, so that it's um, it has a it has the the move Power Whip. What the fuck did he say? Floating stones. Okay, sure. What a useless piece of shit. Uh, this stone is, I think, the one that you you have to you can evolve Magneton into Magnezone in this cave. Okay, you know what? I'm okay with this. This is this is acceptable to me. This is the Electric Bug Pokemon. I need to switch out. I need. I can't leave Frank in against this. He will shit on me. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with this. The Electric Bug Pokemon is pretty decent. I'll probably slap on the XP share on this thing to see uh, how it goes. Everything I have is too powerful, so I'm gonna just catch it straight up. Just believe in the full health catch. I don't believe that the level actually affects how difficult things are to catch, only the base catch rate itself, which is to do- what the fuck? Okay, which has to do with um, what Pokemon it is. It doesn't- I don't know if, if the level, level matters. It might matter, I'm not actually sure. We'll see. Okay, okay, you know what? We'll weaken you, we'll weaken you. Electro web doesn't affect me. Good stuff. All right, send out a Mumu. A Mumu should not one shot this guy. I know he can't. He's not that strong. Fury Cutter is resisted. No problemo. Yep. Good job. Oh, it became mummy. Good stuff. Oh, it has compound eyes. That's right. Uh, what was I trying to say here? So uh, this this bug Pokemon, it's uh, it's fairly fast. It, it's a special attacking uh, bug electric type. Which is perfect, because I need both of those type combinations anyway. And uh, it has a, a really good ability in Compound Eyes, which basically makes... Uh, I believe it makes all moves 15% or 30% more accurate. Uh, and uh, its calling card is that it can use Thunder instead of Thunderbolt. Everyone else in the game uses Thunderbolt because Thunder is uh, like 70% accurate, something stupid like that. Like 70 or 50% accurate. And uh, even though it's much more powerful, it's not worth uh, missing, right? If you can just consistently hit two Thunderbolts rather than missing one Thunder and then hitting the second one, that's better. So that's that's what everyone is always used for. But because he has Compound Eyes, he can actually consistently hit Thunder at like base 90 or base like 85 accuracy, which is really, really good. And that's why, uh, that's basically it's one calling card along with being able to use uh, Sticky Web. Which I don't know if it is in this generation or it's in the next generation. Uh, what do we what do we call this guy? Um, what does he remind me of? He reminds me of like one of those Doctor Mario pills. So what do we we call him Voodoo because there's a Voodoo Doctor. Yeah, Voodoo. Do you like that logic train there? You know, uh, sounds like oh, we got transferred to the grave. That's a little upsetting. Um, all right, so that's probably where we're gonna end the episode here. Okay, I can move it, I see. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna end the episode here. You know, we added a new party member to our team. Uh, is, he's gonna take the place of uh, Amumu. Maybe he's gonna take the place of Winona, actually. Do I care about Winona? I don't give a shit about Winona. We're gonna replace Winona with uh, with Joltik there, and then we're gonna we're gonna level him up with the XP share. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the episode, I'd appreciate a uh, like and comment. They help me out a lot. And uh, if you wanna see more, there will be another episode up tomorrow. I'll see you then.